Hey everyone, yesterday was Thanksgiving, so today is Black Friday, and it's really rainy out today. And so I just kind of wanted to give you another update on my 20 gallon planted aquarium. It's been about a week now since the last update with the mold. Let's get started. First of all, one thing you might notice is that the lid here is kind of propped open, and that's because I added another light to this. So right here, as you can see, I've got another light strip here. This is the Aquion Optolite plus 18 to 24 inches. I only have one of those, so I'm also using the hood as well, kind of as a secondary light. So far, I'm really liking it. It's a lot more light than what I had before, so I feel like it's really gonna help out quite a bit. The mold is still here. It's still coming back. So uh, today I'm also going to be going through with the toothbrush and again cleaning that up. One thing that a lot of people in the comments have said, and I also learned this from my own experience with my community tank, is that eventually all this molding will stop. Some fish might even eat this stuff like plecos or snails. The tank's not cycled yet, so I'm not ready yet to put plecos or snails or anything in here. But if this is still going on once the tank is done cycling, some of what I put in here should be able to take care of that. Let's take a look at the plants. The dwarf hair grass is doing really well. It's still transitioning from submerged to immersed. They're starting to turn mostly green now. As far as what's gonna die off goes, most of what's gonna die off has died off with the dwarf hair grass and we're starting to actually get some growth. So I'm really happy about that. I did get some root tabs and put some root tabs down throughout the tank. I feel like that's helping the dwarf hair grass as well. The Monte Carlo, doesn't really look much different from last week. It does look like it's browning a little bit and maybe kind of dying off in some spots, but not as rapidly. The Java Fern is just fine. That is such an easy plant to take care of. I feel like that is going to thrive no matter what. But unfortunately, this plant back here, again, I don't remember the name of it. Third video in a row that I can't remember the name of this plant and look at it. It is just pitiful. It is dead. Note to self, never buy a plant that I've never heard of before ever again, because this is what happens. I should have done more research. I should have got a plant that I was more comfortable with. So in my cleaning today, when I clean up all this mold, I'm going to also be pulling this plant out and replacing it with another plant. I did go to PetSmart today and I bought one of these top fin Amazon swords, these tissue cultured Amazon swords. As you can see, they're kind of in like some sort of gel. Now, normally I don't like to get plants from the big box chain stores. However, I've had really, really good luck with these tissue cultured Amazon swords from PetSmart before. I bought two of those tissue cultured Amazon swords before and this right here, that's going all the way up my 29 gallon is one of them. I got that plant back in March of 2018 and it is still thriving to this day and it has gotten so big. It's just so tall. That plant has done really well. It just really took off and that's one of those tissue cultured Amazon swords from PetSmart as well as in this 10 gallon tank here. Now the lights haven't kicked on for this tank yet. Uh, they're on a timer. But this right here is another one of those tall Amazon sword plants from PetSmart. As you can see, it's grown so large that it's folding back down into the tank. I've had this one since May at least, maybe April. I've had to cut off some dead leaves every now and then, but really nothing too crazy. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and replace that plant with the tissue cultured plant from Top Fin from PetSmart. I'm gonna clean off this new mold on the driftwood and just do probably another water change and a little bit more maintenance.
Okay guys, I just finished my maintenance, I just finished my water change, and let's kind of go over things. So I replaced that dyeing plant, that compact or whatever, with this Amazon sword. I'm just a lot more comfortable with Amazon swords, having worked with them before, and having worked with this brand of Amazon sword in particular. I did wash the plant before I put it in, I did that off camera. The mold on the wood, I did scrape a bunch of it off, but if you look real close, the wood is still very fuzzy, this mold on the wood is just going to be an ongoing battle. This java fern right here is just not sturdy at all. It keeps shifting around. Every time I shift anything in the tank, that piece of java fern gets shifted too. It hasn't rooted onto the wood yet. Neither has this piece. This piece hasn't rooted on yet either, but I've got the twisty tie still in there holding it in place. Some of the Monte Carlo got shifted around a little bit right around the wood, but I went ahead and made sure that was secure and we'll see how things go. I haven't cleaned the filter yet for this tank because it's still cycling. I'm a couple of weeks away from fish still, but I am thinking fish. Let me know what kind of fish you think I should get. I have it narrowed down to a couple of different options. Option number one is to get a breeding pair of epistogramma cockatoides probably something with like high red. I really like the epistogrammas who look like their fins are on fire and I think I want some of those for this tank. Or another possibility is Mary, my female beta. Currently she's living in a three and a half gallon tank and one of the things I'm thinking about doing is just upgrading her to this tank and spoiling the crap out of her because this is a 20 gallon tank. I, I don't know, I'm just kind of reaching a point where I have so many fish tanks that maintenance is such a beast to do them all that I'm thinking instead of having this be an additional tank, thinking of moving Mary from her three and a half gallon tank into this tank once it's done cycling. Another thing I've been thinking about doing is just making this like a small community tank. I already have a 29 gallon community tank, but it would be kind of cool to have, you know, two different tropical community tanks with different fish in them. I really, really, really want some rasboras and I think it would be cool to put them in this tank, especially if I put the rasboras and Mary in here together. That's another option. I know I certainly don't want to put bottom feeders with the beta and I would not mix the beta and the epistogrammas together. So guys, let me know in the comments. Should I get a pair of epistogrammas? Should I put my female beta Mary in here? Or should I make it a small community tank? Or should I make it a small community tank with Mary? Let me know in the comments what you guys want to see me do with this. All right, we're back maybe an hour later and a lot of the debris has settled. Here we are, just taking a look at everything. It's starting to look really nice. I'm happy with the dwarf hair grass. I'm happy with the direction it's going. I got a lot of the dead stuff out. There's still some dead stuff in there on the dwarf hair grass, but I got most of the dead stuff out. And you can see there's a lot growing in. So this is gonna carpet really, really well. Like, look at this. Like, I've just got random strings of dwarf hair grass just kind of sticking out of the gravel going in every which direction. So that's a lot of growth. It's gonna look really good once that fills in. The Monte Carlo could look better, but I've had this new light now for maybe a week, and I got the root tabs in for the dwarf hair grass and the Monte Carlo maybe a week ago. This new Amazon sword here, we'll see how it does. Oh, ooh, it's laying against the glass. I might fix that before my next video. The Java fern is looking good. It hasn't rooted on to the wood yet, but hopefully I'm done scraping mold off of this for now. There's still a lot of fuzziness around the wood though. It's still kind of off-putting. And the wood shifts very easy. Every time I touch it to clean it, it shifts around in the gravel. So I'm not really digging that. There's just not a lot of weight to it. I had a rock holding it down before. I don't know. I'm thinking I might want to pour some, some more gravel in here or something. Or maybe I might want to put some river rocks around the base of the wood or something just to kind of bury this piece of wood a little bit. I want to do something to weigh that wood down a little bit more. 
Thank you so much for watching, guys. Make sure you click that like button below. Also, if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that way you get notified every time I upload. Don't forget, I have a giveaway going on right now as well. I'll make sure to leave a link to that video so that if you're new here, you can go and participate in that giveaway as well. I'll see you next time.